starting the recording. Joining me is Eddie B. I'm actually working on the platinum for a, for a PlayStation. That's strange. Hello, everybody. You're strange. You are strange, but it's part of why we love you. Is and... you life, life is strange. Life is strange. It's a fucking solid game, too. Need to and, it. Uh, just back from uh, PAX is Corey and Ultra High Def Hudson Derrick. I'm here. I'm alive. I didn't get sick yet. I didn't. Yay. I didn't catch the the convention plague. So, <laughs> yay! I'll say thank Christ it wasn't back in January when all that flu shit was going around. Oh, oh my gosh, god! Yeah, I, I got Everybody my. Everybody just would have died. Got my Overwatch League hoodie on. Very proud of this. I'm also proud of the Spectre Knight shirt I got. That's currently in the wash. Fuck you. I know it's awesome. They were out of the Shovel Knight one that I wanted, but. That's okay. I I don't know that I particularly cared about the show. That Spectre Knight one is fucking sick, and screw you for not. Yeah, the King Knight, the King Knight one was awesome too. Like, yeah, because they they had so much King Knight stuff there. Like they had plushies and card. They had a deck of cards, and every single one was like a King Knight like pose. It was awesome. Was it through Fairy Gamer? No, it was through Yacht Club. Yacht Club. It okay. was at Yacht Club's booth. Like, I don't know who, would, like, did all of it, but they were selling it. Like, they said, anything you can find here, you can find on our merch store. I said, okay. Okay. So I'll probably be getting that Shovel Knight t-shirt at some point. Because normally with, like, a lot of indie developers like that, they've been going through Fair Gamer. Like, they've been having contracts with them doing merchandise. Yeah. yeah. But, um... Normally, I'd start with uh, games of the week, and I, I think we'll get to that. But I, I really want to jump into uh, the the big stuff here, and uh, I want to talk to Corey about uh, what the fuck he did at PAX. Yeah, I, I mean, do you want to go right into it? Because there's, I, I really do. I played over forty games at PAX. I was, uh, I was, just... I was so excited. So, what do you, what exactly do you want to go th- about first? Do you want to do like AAA, or do you want to? Do you want to skim through AAA and then get into the indie stuff? Because I know that's what we really want to talk about is a lot of the indie stuff. Um, I, I'm curious as to what AAA stuff you got to uh, hit up. And uh, depending on what you hit up, we'll maybe go deeper on a few of those and then definitely well, dig into some indie. I played I played everything in the, in the Nintendo booth. I went there both days uh, just because I wanted to make sure I hit everything. Just because, like, well, you know, I knew we would talk about it here and on PAL Block. What all did they have there? What um, were they showing? They had SNK Heroines, Dark Souls, Travis uh, Strikes Again, Wolfenstein 2, Donkey Kong, uh, Hyrule Warriors, Just Shapes and Beats, Garage, Dead Cells. Uh, what were the other two indies that were in the corner? The um, Messenger? The Messenger. And there was one other one. What was the other one? Hold wasn't on. Hollow Knight by chance, was it? Nope, DJ Hollow Knight didn't show their face. I did not see Hollow Knight anywhere. I looked and looked and looked. Yeah, there were even no packs. There, there was nobody tweeted about them or anything. Man, what was the other that, game? That really makes me wonder what the fuck's going on with them right now. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Look, the Nintendo booth, dude. It took me an hour and a half to get through that line the second day. And when I got oh, to the bet. front, the line was over three hours. They actually had a person at the end of the line that says line is closed <laughs> because there are so many people in line. Jeez. It was awesome, dude. So, like, I, I stood in line with, with uh, these guys, the whole, and we were talking about a bunch of Nintendo stuff, and they go to Comic-Con every year, and they were like, that they, they had never been to PAX before. And this, this is my second PAX, so, like, I kind of knew what to expect. But, I mean, I hadn't been in, like, seven or eight years so uh i got into the nintendo booth and went straight to dark souls because uh you know matt and moose wanted to know how how that played on switch 
and mm-hmm. I was I was blown away by how good Dark Souls and well a lot of the games I was blown away what how they looked, but Dark Souls specifically was like, holy crap! They went through and redid all the texture work to everything. It's a locked thirty frames a second. It will play in 1080p on docked. Uh, okay, and I played and I got a pretty hefty uh, gameplay demo. I actually played from the beginning of the game all the way through the asylum, all the way to like the first real boss, the uh, Taurus demon. And uh, the Taurus demon actually has like real fur now (laughs) (laughs) because like, you know, in, in the Xbox 360 version, it was just like texture that looked like fur, but wasn't really like, wavy or anything right it was just kind mm-hmm. of painted on yeah when he jumped like the fur moved with the motion of it Aww. dude it was i dude i was like and i knew like wolfenstein would look good because i i know how good doom looks and how good rocket league looks and uh mm-hmm. there's actually a panic button guy there that i talked to a little bit about wolfenstein <clears throat> but we'll get there in a second like dark souls was the most impressive looking game there, not made by nintendo Really? Just from a technical standpoint, it was. Well, that's the one. Er- that's when everybody's like really planning on buying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's so. it's going to be my first foray into finally sitting down and playing anything in the Dark Souls realm. Yeah. So well, I tr- I just wonder is Nelco Bedai really from a marketing perspective? I wonder if they're going to really market this game on Switch. They are that Dark Souls was. The Nintendo booth was the only place it was playable. It wasn't playable at PlayStation or Xbox. That's it, and the I... guy, the guy there that works with, he's the guy that was at that booth was like a Nintendo third pro- party uh, kind of representative for Nintendo, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna buy it on PlayStation Four because of the 4K 60 frames a second, but like, you know, I'm." definitely getting it on switch too, probably because he gets a free copy but like you know he's <laughs> he's like i want to take this game on the go and he was in like i was thoroughly impressed with like everything he was saying he was like yeah they're marketing this game through nintendo because you know nintendo wants people to know that the big games are on their system and they're they're ponying up money for the marketing you know well they got the amiibo also the sale i yeah. mean well, it's yeah. already sold out everywhere at, at, like pretty much at every game stop yeah. But I think that I think that we most uh, kind of like certified that they're going to be doing a lot of press and a lot of lot of marketing for that game when it comes out. Yeah. So uh, Dark Souls was really impressive. I, the movement was really fluid. They d- redid a lot of the animations of the enemies too. So like they're not like clipping through doors or walls or anything. They kind of redid a lot of things. Like I was I was really impressed just in that first kind of like. They let me play for like a half hour, and I was like, oh, nice. I'm, I can't believe they let me That's like good. play that long. Uh, and now you know why the line was so fucking Well, they're like, they're just like, play till you die, and I'm like, okay, um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and like, I had played through that first section of Dark Souls so many times that I like really knew what I was doing. So like, I went through the Firelink Shrine, I, I went up through the first area, and, and like, kind of collected some souls, and I went through some of the the upgrade menu stuff and like a lot of it was kind of like grayed out because it was a demo build. Uh, but like I kind of upgraded myself a little bit and went through, went to the first boss and died at the first boss. Like I, I granted I went there without any Estes flasks or, and I had like, like this much health left, but like I got him down to half health and then he, then he jumped, then I climbed up the ladder on the left side to get up high because you're supposed to like jump down onto him. I went up there and I forgot the archers were up there. So I was fight I was fighting the archers and the uh Taurus demon jumped up there and landed on me and that's how I died. Dang. So uh but yeah there's some I got a lot of gameplay footage too on the YouTube channel. So like anybody listening wants to go to youtube.com slash NGR radio and check out the uh either the PAX East 2018 playlist or the NGR Radio Plays playlist. I got some off-camera off footage of a lot of these games. <clears throat> and we were and like, I asked the guy if I was allowed. He's like, yeah. He's like, you just have to shoot it like this. So, like, 
you know how Nintendo is. There's already always got to be somebody uh, uh. in the picture playing the game, and which was yep. which was fine or whatever. But like, I got Wolfenstein two, I got Dead Cells, I got Dark Souls. Like, oh, it was awesome. And and like, Travis Strikes Back. I went I went over there and like, a friend friend of uh, Nerds Gone Rogue, Joey Ferris was there. Ferris Real Productions. You guys should check him out if you want to see some cool YouTube content. He was there. And like Suda fifty one was there and he got pictures with Suda fifty oh, one and like he was in the booth while I was there and I was trying to make my way over to him, but like the crowd around him was so big. Jesus. I couldn't get there and then he, like he had like his people kind of like escort him out of the booth or whatever after he was done. But he was walking up behind people playing his game and like picking up the controller and just playing the game with him with the That's people. So I was like and awesome. like like half the people I watched him do that to, like, or like, who's this weird guy like playing this game with me? I'm like, you don't understand. That's the creator of the game. It was, it was uh, cool, man. Uh, so uh, I guess we could talk about Travis Strikes again. It's a, that's a solid action game, man. Yes. I, I, dude, it it was running at a at sixty frames, like fluid sixty frames, no skipping, nothing. It was just like. Uh, and the combos, like all, let me, let me bring up my notes. I took notes. <laughs> I took notes on every game we played. <laughs> um, I think it's towards the bottom because I played it on the second day. Uh, la, 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 filling time because I don't want dead air. Um, a lot of the levels really looked like, uh, kind of reminded me of like Tron a little bit, like those yep. bright, bright neon blues and like the the kind of. Uh, pixelated i would kind of compare like because like you go through the game and you're fighting uh viruses and bugs in these little games and you get sucked into the game and you have to fight the viruses and the bugs in the game and like mm-hmm. uh a lot a lot of the level design was like almost perfect and then you'd see these little chunks taken out like kind of pixelated out of the out of the level <laughs> and like you'd hit one guy and then the the way you lock on to other enemies is like it's super fluid to where like it's almost like top down batman arkham combat where like you automatically just zoom to the next guy yeah it felt dude it felt so good and like the vertical versus the horizontal attacks felt really good and really fluid and uh some of the combos like Like in DMC, kind of like when you're on the last guy, kind of slow down to show you like these really cool finishing moves. It, I was I was thoroughly impressed with Travis Strikes again. Like I like I was gonna get it because it's like it looked cool, but now it's like at the top of my list. It's it was awesome, and I I think they said that that game comes out in November. (coughs) So, uh, but it was cool. I got to see suda 51 and like i tried to snap a picture but it was super blurry and i was like nobody's gonna believe me if i show them this so i'm just not even gonna bother <laughs> but <laughs> uh what i play next oh wolfenstein 2 let me tell you about wolfenstein 2 like i and i i saw comparison videos with the ps4 pro version and the xbox one x version and it, look it doesn't look anything like those versions where they wanted no powerful hardware, so yeah. But when you put this game up next to like a Xbox One or an Xbox One S version of the game, aside from like some lighting and some uh, up close like metal uh, uh, texture detail, and, and running at thirty frames a second instead of sixty, like graphically, this game is indistinguishable from the Xbox one version. Like if you would have told me that I was playing the Xbox one version, if it was running on like a launch Xbox one, I would have been like, well, I, I believe you. Like mm, nice. it looks great. Yeah. And it, it's been getting a lot of press on Twitter that they were just like, this game is like literally legit that it, look, it looks, it looks good and it runs smooth. Yeah. It, it run really smoothly. And, and it, I got to play, uh, the scene, and I don't know if either of you played Wolfenstein, but it's the scene after the the wheelchair scene where he puts on the where he starts putting on like the mechanical suit or whatever. And like yeah. it's, that, it's I wonder is that past where you meet the uh, 
the uh the mom and the daughter the nazi mom and the daughter i, I think so because they only let me watch one cutscene, and it was the cutscene where like the the ship was kind of like over the water and the the one guy that has the dent in his head was being pulled up by the the black guy and like uh the demo started with you in the room where like the nazis are trying to escape and the guy that got his arm cut off uh-huh. is like uh holding the one nazi lady hostage while you run around and start doing stuff uh but man that game like a panic button i I was talking to the panic button guy he's like yeah wolfenstein was a little bit tougher than doom but that's because doom is a two-year-old game and this game is more refined and more structured than doom was uh just because the engine's been around longer and they've had enough time to like play with it and whatever <clears throat> well, it was uh, it was literally announced after Wolfenstein Two actually got a got release. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. but it but like he was telling me that you know they they didn't really struggle with Wolfenstein Two as much as they did with Doom because of uh you know they they had worked with the engine before and they got a lot of experience working on Doom so the process was right. a lot easier. Right, uh, they had one under their belt already at least. Yeah. And uh, I guess they helped a little, helped Iron Galaxy a little bit with the Skyrim port, so they have a lot of like support and help from Bethesda. And I was like, That's so, good. and I, I was asking them about their Bethesda uh, partnership, and I gave them one of the uh, business cards because, like, I was like, we'd be after this game comes out, or whenever you guys are allowed to talk more about it, or after E three or whatever, whenever this game comes out, we'd be, we'd love to have you on one of the shows to talk about you know wolfenstein and, and your work with bethesda and he was like yeah 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 that'd be awesome and he took he took a card and nice so uh what where was i going with that oh and i was like so uh since your bethesda partnership is strong do you think we'll see anything like uh dishonored or fallout come to switch eventually he's like he just kind of laughed he's like you're not the first person to ask me that. All I can say is our partnership with Bethesda is really strong, and we would love to work on another one of their projects in the future. <laughs> I was like, come on. Give me something, dude. Just give me something. You know they're under contracts in the case. So I know. Nothing. I, I know, yeah. but I was just like. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm going to be shocked at this point if at the very least we don't get uh, Fallout something on Switch. I don't considering... think we don't get Fallout. Because no. yeah, I, I think. I think, Corey, you should have said, can we see anything from you guys for E3? And if they said, when you just got to watch, then we're probably could hint at what their next game may be. Yeah. Uh, well, he was kind of hinting at, like, this This game was gonna, wasn't was going to make it out before E3. So, like, I was like, that. this game's going to be their E3 game. He said they have other projects in the works. They just They just can't talk about them. I was like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. So probably because they probably haven't been revealed or anything. Yeah. Something. Uh, but Cause man, because it, it, it sounds like they had to be working on Wolfenstein too, while Bethesda themselves was doing the other versions. Because for a game to for, because they haven't announced it yet for a release date, right? No, they said they they still have some things they want to work on because it's still it still doesn't run at like a solid solid 30 okay and that's kind of what they're they want to get that down and nintendo and bethesda are giving them all the time in the world to like make sure it runs well uh yeah, well t- to have even like that demo that you play it sounds like they had to be they had to start at that probably i would say like maybe june of last year well they they said they started it over a year ago they they, they knew like wolfenstein was coming and like they wanted to have it out within a, a similar time frame. They they said they wanted to have it out quicker than than Doom. I was like, well, yeah, because the Switch wasn't out yet. But like, right? They like because they they worked on Rocket League also, and they said they said okay. uh, working on <laughs> working on Rocket League was a little bit harder actually than working on Doom, just really? because like. Well, they had to recode all the online infrastructure and stuff too to work on the Switch and to be multi-platform and like. Okay. They said that seems that. that seems like a psionics thing. He said, but they actually both have to make sure they work both ways, just because like, mm-hmm. psionics needs to make yeah. sure it works on their end because it's cross-play, 
and they need to make sure it works because they're doing the coding with the switch engine or the switch uh infrastructure so uh yeah but he he said that uh the team really loved working on wolf loves working on wolfenstein and and I was like, "Do you think we'll get a port of Wolfenstein One?" He's like, "He's like, I haven't heard anything about any other projects except for the ones that we can't announce yet." I was like, "Yeah, I'd I'd really like to see them bring uh, New Order over as well, not just uh, or yeah, what is it, New Blood, whatever the fuck the the first New Order, was. New Order yeah. and Old Blood, yeah, right. So, because I'd really like to have both of those on the Switch to be able to actually go one, two. I, I think they I think Pen and Book but it won't say anything. I think Bethesda's gonna say something when they do their E three conference. Uh because at this year's E three for Bethesda, everything has to be new. Most of their announcements from last year is out. So I don't know what they got up up their sleeves for this year. Uh, they like you said, it, it sounds like they've got some things picked out and ready to announce and go this is the next batch of stuff that we're working on and here's kind of a rough time frame because it, it sounds like really they're not going to let much of any of their announcements go you know more than a year yeah. without releasing yeah they he did say that they have like they have multiple projects in the works but they've had to turn away projects because so many people saw how their port of doom ran that they've mm-hmm. had to turn away projects because so many people are asking for their help. And he said, it's been like, he he's like, I'm not like a, like the head of the studio or anything, but it's kind of nice that our studio has the ability to pick and choose what projects they want to do because of, uh, there's so much potential on that. The switch provides, uh, did we have that kind of, oh, who was the one having problems putting their game on switch? Was it like THQ or something? We had that discussion why Penn and Weather could get stuff working on Switch, but some some other triple A developer can't do it themselves. Yeah, I don't remember who we were talking about. That was who was that? I guess I could look it up, but yeah, they panic button. I don't know panic button. The panic button dude seemed like a really cool dude, and like you know, I wouldn't mind having them on here once Wolfenstein Two ships. Nice. Uh, so I'm surprised they haven't like uh, expanded. For the games that they he said he said they've hired a few people to take on some other workload. They like they they've grown as a studio because of the work that's of the influx of work that they're getting. Yeah. Uh, but they they're very particular with who they hire because they're a porting studio. They're not really a development studio, so a lot of them yeah. they have to have like some of the top engineers. Uh, so. Whatever. I, I, I thought it was cool that he actually talked a lot and didn't just kind of have the standard PR answers. I mean, he did, but like, you know, he actually was pretty open more than the, than the, a lot of the other people. So, uh, but, I put, but you know, Wolfenstein two looks great. I'm, I'm sold on the switch version. I've been waiting for the switch version. So, uh, yeah, Wolfenstein two on switch. If you're waiting for that version, you're not going to be disappointed. Yeah. Uh, I know Game Informer. I know Game Informer had a uh, article up that said like reasons why we're excited and some reasons why we're concerned. And I was like, some of the concerns they have, I'm like, dude, this. I mean, like, I get it. I love Game Informer. Like, I, I, I just like, I, I. It's gonna have some issues just for the fact that the the hardware isn't as powerful as an Xbox One or a PS4. But mm-hmm. I was I was impressed and and you know whatever I think I've, I've played just, Doom. I've played Doom on 4K. Just wanted, want that game. Just just let it run, let it be steady, and let me enjoy it. Yeah, I don't think they're they're worried about all the tech, some of the technical stuff. Like if it's a solid thirty and it runs good, hey, why not? Yeah. No. Yeah. So. Um, what was that? What else? Oh, I played, I played just about five minutes of Donkey Kong and five minutes of Hyrule Warriors. Like Donkey Kong. The one thing I have to say about Donkey Kong is the character models, like, like of Donkey Kong and Diddy and, and like the main Kongs look like they've gotten a, like a, they've switched out character models or something because like, I don't know. It just looks a lot cleaner and a lot, 
like I don't know. It, it it looks like Donkey Kong. Like the same thing I said about Dark Souls, where like Donkey Kong's fur kind of looks like it flows a little bit better in the animations, and like Diddy Kong looks like his anim his like roll anim or his like somersault animation is a little bit more fluid, and like I don't know, everything just looks a little bit more fluid and and cleaner. And Funky Kong, I played a little bit as Funky Kong just because that's like the new thing in the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's really cool, dude. <laughs> He's dumb, but he's cool. Uh, and like, so, and like the idle animation. If you just leave Donkey Kong sitting there, and I heard a rumor that they changed his idle animation, but I wasn't sure what it was. And they changed it from him flipping open a 3DS to play, pulling out a Switch and and Diddy Kong walking behind him and watching him play. I was like, that's that's like a really neat touch, you know? Yeah. So, uh. I didn't really notice any differences in Hyrule Warriors. It did look a little bit cleaner. Um, but, I mean, that comes with any kind of upgrade or definitive edition or whatever. Uh, I did see the uh, Breath of the Wild costumes. Uh, I didn't get to play the Breath of the Wild costumes, but I saw them. Uh, they had a monitor there with a bunch of demos on it and stuff, and they look cool. Um, Zelda looks cool. She has this sword that can, like, when she does, like, that spin attack that Link usually does. uh uh-huh has like this purple kind of ring kind of almost reminds me of like a little magic spell that comes out when she does the spin move. It looks really pretty and uh, the animation and it doesn't, it's not as choppy as the Wii U version was when like you (laughs) chop down 50 or a hundred enemies at a time. It's very smooth. Uh, So, Uh, but do you feel like it justifies the cost increase from the, uh, the Wii U version? What Hyrule Warriors? Uh, Donkey Kong. So oh, Donkey Kong. Grazed past that. Um, I don't know. I didn't. There, there's not really. I didn't really play enough to see if there's anything like really new. But I like. It sound like there was other than Funky Kong. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think that's pretty much it. Is the Funky Kong stuff? So like, I mean, if you have a Wii U, unless you want this game portably, like, and you have a Wii U, I mean, honestly play the wii u version but if you if you don't have the wii u version like if you don't have a wii u i mean like sweat you you should play this game because it's it's an underrated 2d platformer i feel like i feel like the people that bought it loved it and everybody else just slept on it because it was on wii u so yeah i mean i i actually let that one slide past me and i i should have because i i really did like uh um country returns on uh we it was fucking fantastic yeah hell i ended up getting it twice because i got it on 3ds as well so. yeah i ended up like i got it on Wii, but i didn't i played through about two worlds on uh Wii, and then i put it down and i ended up getting the uh 3ds version and i actually played through that so um. yeah i was kind of in the same boat i I started it on the Wii and I didn't really delve into it until I had it on 3DS. Yeah. Uh, and that's when I actually got into it enough to finish it. Yeah. So, um, something about platformers and portability just plays well together, but yeah, which is going to sound really contradictory when we talk about what I've been playing. But anyways, um, so let's, uh, how about some of the uh, just grazing over some of the uh, big AAA stuff from uh, Microsoft and Sony over at uh, PAX? Um, so the only tr- kind of AAA things that Microsoft brought were uh, like they brought Sea of Thieves, and the the rumor around there was like they brought Sea of Thieves because Crackdown was not ready to show, and like some <laughs> some of the some of the. Uh, <laughs> representatives were kind of whispering that like uh sea of thieves didn't do as well as they wanted it to so they took sea of thieves instead (laughs) which is fun it's funny to watch people play sea of thieves for the first time and like having a good time and stuff and and i was just like man they really kind of missed an opportunity here because this these lines are like super long for people to get in on crackdown uh but played state of decay too uh, it feels so much better and so much cleaner than the first one. Like it, 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 you could tell they had a way bigger budget on this game. It feels super clean. It feels 
Like the shooting mechanics and stuff kind of feel like uh, almost Tomb Raider esque, where like uh-huh. that's kind of like what the movement and the shooting feel like is is kind of like Rise of the Tomb Raider. Um, it's not as tight as Gears or even as tight as as uh, Tomb Raider, but I mean it felt really good still. It felt uh, it felt really solid. Like we we did a co op session and and we were kind of scavenging around and uh it's it's kind of weird because like you don't want to make any noise but every time you open a door you make a noise every time you open a fridge or open a chest or open a drawer like it makes noise and and uh attracts zombies and they i don't know if this was in the first game or not but they added these little like flashbangs where like you can throw them off in the distance and it'll distract zombies that way while you go in the other direction to uh, loot something, <clears throat> and then uh, me and uh, me and my friend Mitch, who uh, who I was doing the co op session with, we we found shotguns and we were walking around and and he he got a car and started the car. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you getting in the car? There are no zombies. And we go from having like one or two zombies lurking around to like twenty. And he's driving this car, and he drives. He tries to run over one of those big, like the big fat ones that are in the trailer, and like this thing just explodes all over the car to the point where like he's driving the car, and we have to like dive out Grand Theft Auto style of the car <laughs> because <laughs> the zombie has acid that is poisoning you. <laughs> so we had to dive out and take on this giant horde of zombies. Um, and, and we kind of like funneled ourselves into this uh, kind of like this uh, courtyard of a uh, abandoned mansion, and, and we're taking out these these zombies. But uh, it feels really good. It feel if they said they're going to tighten up the shooting mechanics a little bit, uh, but you could definitely tell the the reps from Undead were there, uh, and they were saying like, yeah, they definitely gave us a lot more time and a lot more money to work on this, this game, and uh, they're actually. <laughs> Uh, they actually have some of the devs from the coalition. Uh, they kind of moved over to Undead Labs to work on the shooting mechanics because they want this game to be the the best kind of zombie survival game it can be. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of cool to hear. Uh, nice. But <laughs> uh, the other, the only other Xbox game that they had was uh, PUBG, <coughs> which Lame. it was fine. It felt. I mean, it feels good to play. Like, but everything. <laughs> everything that we were playing on was on a PC. Like they didn't have, we weren't playing on Xbox builds. We were playing on PC builds because the stuff that Microsoft sent them malfunctioned. Like, like 70% of the, 70% of like the Xbox one X's that were there malfunctioned. And they had to go out late Thursday night to like all these electronic stores to buy the high end gaming PCs. And they had to get like a, a a like a budget from Microsoft how much they could spend on gaming PCs so they could play the games <laughs> because or Microsoft wow. was just going to be screwed. Uh, so, but while we were standing in line, we saw uh, Major Nelson and Morgan Webb, and it was really cool. Yeah, nice. because Morgan Webb works PR for Microsoft now, I guess. Uh, so I, I'm curious. Because I know you didn't mention it. I'm guessing it's not there. But considering it's it's almost a year out from their announcement, was there uh, anything on Ori and Will of the Wisps? No. I was surprised that Ori wasn't there. Like, I like Crackdown and Ori were the two games. But, like, I don't know why they weren't there. But they had... E3. Yeah, but, I mean, they announced Ori already. I thought they would have had at least right, a playable they're, demo. They're, they're saving more of of that for like their indie section for E3. They don't want to bring anything that big to PAX. Well, they they brought they brought State of Decay 2 and below. I mean, sta- I mean State, of De- State of Decay 2 uh a lot of people were are not paying attention to that game. And, and they probably just need that something to uh shock people. Well, not shock, but to sell people on Ori and stuff. That's a big game that they'll that they'll do for E3. They want to bring it to something like PAX. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, was, I, I, was... I feel like PAX would have been the better audience for it. Though. Yeah, just to get it in people's no, hands. Of the, I feel Nintendo's like domin- 
Nintendo's dominated with a lot of indie titles and stuff like that. But Ori is an indie. Ori's Microsoft. Ori's big but Ori's, I mean, Ori's, I mean, yeah, but, but Ori started out as an indie game before Microsoft got them. So Ori is not Ori's not big as something like as Gears of War. Right, and that's that's why I think Pac That's why I think it would have right been better at PAX. Out. Yeah. Just because that's where I, like indies thrive. You know? I, I, it, it, it would have made sense, yeah, to do that. But if Microsoft is not bringing other indies to that to that booth, it doesn't. Or in the Black Forest would have did nothing for them. It would have did nothing for Microsoft. So they're trying to they're save really all of their big, up. right. They're, if they did, if they would have did it at PAX, then Microsoft would have been in trouble at E3. Because then, what do they show at E3 that's going to really get people into wa- uh, want to watch in their conference if they throw everything at, at PAX? I'm just saying, considering, like I said, it's been almost a year since we've really doesn't heard mean anything nothing. on Ori. So Does, doesn't mean nothing. Look at Sony; they did stuff for a whole year, and we still haven't seen anything. That's mm-hmm. a shame. That's a shame. We, I mean, we're just no, not I mean, the same with Nintendo. I was just kind of a little more vexed given that Microsoft didn't really doesn't really feel like they've had as much going on as Nintendo and Sony has like they they feel like they've got more ground to uh, to cover than uh, the competition as it were I mean I think if they would have bought a lot of the games from E3 like some of their some of the big games or exclusives to E3 uh I mean, not E3, to PAX from E3, then, yeah, I could see that really happening. Like, going to a competition, at least with Nintendo and with Sony. But I don't think... I don't, I think Microsoft is just waiting for E3 because they think they can sell more people than they can at PAX. They wouldn't get that much coverage at PAX because of Nintendo. I, I don't know. I think I, if, if they brought big shit, then it will get covered. But, it, you know, it it's, get, it's kind of the... Uh, the if you build it they will come mentality but yeah i don't know i think a lot of the people i heard a lot of people asking where ori was while i was there so i don't know i I feel like it would have done better in the booth where like you know daisy and blow was at. they could have had like another monitor with ori there and people would have been stoked but um Mm -hmm. i don't know i i think microsoft kind of had a poor showing at pax honestly like i liked what i played there just wasn't a lot there, you know? I mean, even Sony brought stuff that was like, okay, maybe it's not PlayStation, like, first-party stuff, but we have a ton of PlayStations here, so play the games on PlayStation. So It's, it's, it's April. They're gearing up for, they're gearing up for uh, E3. I think Nintendo... I well, think Nintendo PlayStation's because- gearing up for Detroit because I don't think that game's going to do very well. Because yeah. what I played, it was not very good. Really? Uh, That's fucking here. disappointing. It was... Cl- I mean, we, we can talk about that in a little bit, but, uh, you know, in the Microsoft booth, I just want to finish up the Microsoft booth stuff. I, I played I played PUBG. I thought it felt really good. Like, I came home and, and downloaded it because I thought it played real solid, and, and like, I, I wanted to try it out, and I actually like it more than I like Fortnite, to be honest with you. Uh, did they have cold Bay at Microsoft or that? Was yeah, that yeah. There's a there's a 20 second video on the YouTube page because the lady that was running the Code Vein station yelled at me <laughs> for filming it. But <laughs> whatever. Look, I gotta do what I gotta do. Okay, I, I I don't have time for these like cosplaying booth booth babes. I thought it was in 2008 again, but like. To, to yell at me about filming a game that people are interested in. <laughs> Sorry that, you know, our audience is interested in your game and I want to show it to them. Sorry. Right. Sorry for your free marketing, <laughs> Bandai Namco. It's kind of funny they didn't have a sign that said no recording or anything. They did. They... But or I just promptly ignored it. I did. I wasn't in line. So, so uh, here's, here's something for you, Eddie. I just, I, I'm... I'm rattling thoughts around in my brain here's what they should have done for for microsoft for ori they should have wheeled out ori and they should have flown in milton to actually talk to people while they were there yeah 
Yeah, because that's what the below guys did. Like two of the below devs were there talking to people. Well, actually, I think there was like three or four of them, but there were uh-huh. only two manning the booth while I was there. And like another thing is like I I love talking to indie devs about their game and like when when people are starting to put out their games you can like when they talk to you and stuff you can tell how nervous they are about people playing their game like the public playing their game for the first time and it's like it's the reaction look i play it like at, when i was at when i was at cappy when i was at uh bishop and when i was uh talking to the dead cells guy like now granted two of the three de- devs aren't english speaking and like i can't really get a get a feel off of like because I, I don't know how different languages kind of portrayed how nervous they are or anything, but all three of them felt really nervous when I was asking them questions about their game. They're ne- they're nervous because they don't want to mess up. They want to get the message out, but they're nervous because they're, they want to see how people are going to react to their games. They're there for the reaction. Yeah. They're not they're not there for the interviews and and all that PR talk like all of that stuff will come Well, later. that's they're not true because up. I sat in the press the press booth th- for all th- for two of the three of those demos. Uh-huh. So they were there for questions, but I mean, they, they were there for questions, but if you the developers just want to see the developers are more interested in like what are your thoughts? Do you like this? What you don't like? Because they want to make sure that they bring out a product that's going to appeal to everybody. Like, you're making a game, and yeah, it's a business that you're, you're selling it, and that's more important to them. It's going to be the reactions, because guess what? Just because you said something, you did a, a PR thing, that's fine, unless you mess up in your in your messaging with that. But if they could get work, if work could get around and how, how good that game is, or if how bad the game is and stuff that you know it's in a state that's not good, they're going to be looking more to that. They're not going to be looking on the websites and on Twitter and social media to find out how they did on a on a PR or on a PR discussion or talk. They want to see if little Timmy is going to pick up this game or if Big John is going to pick up this game. What is his thoughts at PAX? That's going to interest them more. So yeah. they're nervous about that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess, but it's just, it was just interesting watching them, like, kind of, like, watch, like, they were, like, kind of sneaking around people watching them play, and, like, I I sat and played below for, like, I probably played below for, like, 25 minutes, and the guy was, like, are you liking it? Are you doing okay? I'm, like, yeah, man, I'm, like, I'm, like, look, I'm, I'm sold on this game. I'm playing it so I can talk about it on my podcast. Like, I was, like, look, I, I, I run, I'm, I'm co-host on four podcasts i run four podcasts i'm like running this youtube channel like i i i want to get the word out there and we have a lot like between all five of our shows like our five of our podcasts we have huge download numbers to the point where like we can make a difference in this if we get the word out about these games and 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 so and that's what they're looking for that's what that's what they want that's what i said that's more important important so so they're nerfed because they don't know how the reaction is going to be. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Below was kind of... I didn't play in the Microsoft booth, but it was at the Microsoft booth, but I played it at... Uh, uh, the Why is my mind blanking right now? Cappy. I played, uh-huh. it, I played it in their booth, and, like, I... The minute I sat down, and, like, the game... The, well, the demo opens up. You get off, you get off a boat, and you're just stranded on this island. Right, and, and it kind of feels a little bit like Zelda in a way where, like, I got off this boat, I went to this campfire off to the right, and it was just like, you know, you light the campfire and, like, there's three pieces of fish laying around the around the campfire, uncooked. It says uncooked fish. You walk up to the campfire, it gives you the option to cook fish, put out fire, light torch. And so I was like, I'll cook the fish because, like, I'm thinking Breath of the Wild, like, if I cook the fish, it'll provide me more hearts and, and whatever. And then I go explore and I find a cave and I go into this cave and I just start exploring this cave. And, you know, there's like five different exits out of this cave and they lead you to other areas of the map. One leads you out back to the bonfire and one leads you up onto this cliff, like all these different ways to explore. And I just explored and I had, I had some uh, really nice headphones on. 
and the music's just really kind of like relaxing and kind of you hear the water breaking in the background because you're on the island and uh you know you hear the the light uh you know swipes of your sword you hear stuff hitting your shield uh, i found a shield by the way i don't you can play the whole game without finding a weapon uh but you know you collect these little light orbs to unlock new uh kind of pathways and then i guess quote unquote harder areas of the game and i'm sold on below man i don't usually like survival games but i'm sold on below it 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 was beautiful i was like <clears throat> i was asking the dev i'm like i don't want this to come out the wrong way but the last time i saw this game like it looks a lot cleaner and a lot smoother now. And they bumped the frame rate up from 30 frames to 60 frames. Uh, it's running at 4K and it has HDR support if you have it at 1X or or something else eventually. Uh, so, I mean, it below is really good. Uh, really, really solid. I And the one thing is they didn't say it was an Xbox exclusive anymore. They said Xbox console first. And so... There's some, I guess there's some, because I was like, like, uh, is this still an Xbox exclusive? Because I could really see myself like pouring time into this on, say, a little handheld console not made by Microsoft. <laughs> and, and, I'm a, and I'm exclusive for Microsoft right time. None, yeah, none and he just said, for... yeah, he just said it was, he said, he's like, yeah. Uh, it's Xbox first. We don't really have anything else to announce at this time. We're just focusing on the Xbox and PC platforms. Uh, you know, just keep following us. That's all he said. And I was like, don't worry, we'll do. <laughs> because, like, I could really see myself pouring time into this game on Switch. But, um, yeah, uh, yeah, it was good. So, um, what, what else do we want to, where do we want to go from here? I mean, I played a lot. I played Dead Cells. I played Chasm. I played Shovel Knight. Well, uh, go to Sony. Uh, out the way. yeah, we really didn't hit much of Sony. I mean, there's not really much to hit. Detroit was, I mean, I'm not looking forward Talk to Detroit. Talk to you about anyway. Detroit because I was totally fucking jazzed about this. So, you know, the rooftop scene that they showed at E3 first, the first thing, that was the demo yeah. I played. That was the demo I played and they just... The, the demo starts with you as an android in this apartment that looks like it's been shot up, right? And, like, uh -huh. there's no context of who you are. There's no context of what you're doing. So I walk into this one room, and I kind of, like, turn the camera, which, by the way, camera in this game, awful. Like, it's so oh, awful. Right. It feels like the camera doesn't stop when you want it to, and it doesn't – It's it's one of those cameras where, like, when you start swinging it, and, like, there's so much of a delay that, like, you have to stop moving the stick and move it again to f it's because you think the camera's not going to move and then it just moves. You know, it's it's got a delayed input, which was my biggest gripe of the demo was delayed input. And I don't know if it was p the console I was playing on or that's just the game. I'd, I'm not into Quantic Dreams games at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I've, n I've never played any of them. They just never had any interest in me. But I, like... Ed, I know you're super interested in Detroit, and I th I know Matt's interested in it a little bit, uh, <clears throat> but I mean it it felt really slow to me, I, and and like the third person camera is like super close to the character, which is really annoying. Uh, but like I walk into this room, I turn the camera around, I'm like, okay, I'm a police officer, I'm an android police officer, and I'm investigating this apartment that's been shot up, uh, this family's been killed and the, the other Android has this, uh, girl held hostage on the rooftop. So I'm like, okay, so <clears throat> man, I got all this, like, I need some water. I'm not used to talking this much. Um, I, I see all the, like some of the, uh, police officers have been shot too. And some of them are dead. So like I go up and investigate the bodies. There's like, once you start investigating the bodies, like the room kind of turns into the Arkham uh, style detective mode where like the room gets blue with all these lines and like outlines of the figures are blue. And uh, I don't know if this started in city or in origins, but the, uh, 
scene reconstruction where like you yeah. can kind of rewind and fast forward through the scene and kind of see what kind happened. Almost like it kind of almost sounds like uh the Telltale Batman Adventure games because when you do like investigating and you find stuff, it like it stuff gets highlighted and everything. Yeah, uh, this is. I mean, I I'm kind of waiting to play Batman until the mm-hmm. second season. I mean, I know the second season just finished, so I'm waiting for the second season to come to Switch, and I'm going to play wo- season one and two back to back. Uh, but I uh, like the it. It felt a lot like Arkham Origins scene reconstruction did and like certain points in the scene are highlighted like you see like this bar at the bottom and that's the length of the scene some of them are highlighted blue because when there's a blue part in the uh in the in the bar that means there's an air a new uh item to to investigate in the scene right so you're investigating that item and then there's a yellow part at the very end that's like okay this is where something massive happened and then there's like oh okay when this guy got shot his phone flew out of his hand so it kind of leads you to the next thing to go investigate (coughs) and so like i'll go investigate the phone i went into the little girl's room and investigated some stuff and i was doing all these investigating and like when you're investigating instead of just pressing like x or square or triangle they have you do like fighting game mechanics on the right stick, like down and curve or uh down up and circle around. Like Yeah, that's heavy ray. Heavy ray does the same thing. Yeah, and I was like, Can I just press square like a normal human being to investigate this stuff? I mean, it's not like I'm gonna like fall off a ledge here or anything. I'm looking at a I'm looking at a police officer's badge here. <laughs> you know, I'm just turning it over and stuff, but um and and even like the game was not graphically impressive either like i don't i don't know like what those trailers are running on but they are not playstation 4s <laughs> like Ooh. like god of war and horizon both look way better than this game is yeah. is it like the uh Elias colonial marines kind of thing where it looks graphically impressive but when you actually see it running on the system, you're like, this doesn't look the same. Yeah, it do- like it. It doesn't look the same as the trailers at all. Like, I mean, you get up, and I, again, I don't know if it was like the monitor I was playing on, or if the PlayStation Four Pro wasn't set up correctly or whatever. But it just, it did not look look. I mean, it looked fine. It didn't look. I've seen better looking games that do a lot more. I wonder if this game might need a patch. Yeah, right? it's going to get a patch on day one. Yeah, I mean, what when's it supposed to come out? May? I bet it gets delayed. Yeah. I honestly, I bet it gets delayed, or they're just sending it out to be like, look, we we got to get it out because we spent too much money on it. He's he's out there doing press. So if if they don't do nothing, if they don't delay it by April, yeah, uh, I mean not April, uh, delay it for the rest of this month, then. Yeah, we're gonna get pet we're gonna have to get a patch. Yeah. So I mean if they get the story right, then it, it could survive it. Yeah. You know, but they, you definitely have to fucking nail the story. Speaking of story, like all the people running the Detroit booth were like moms. <laughs> which was weird. Like and I don't like the first thing that popped into my mind was like, okay, there's that like child abuse scene in this game somewhere. Uh, or like domestic violence scene in this game and I wonder if like they're trying to get away from that by having all these older women run these demos. Mm-hmm. And I'm like this this is just kind of weird because like weird. I mean like Namco Bandai had I mean it look I I the Namco Bandai booth I thought it was like 2008 with like all these scantily clad like booth babes. Yeah, I didn't want to use that word but yeah. Uh, Let's call it and call even right. Even Nintendo had like a bunch of like young women working in the booth that were like, you know, whatever, and and they they had you know hip young guys working there. Like the people working at PlayStation, like the just the just the Detroit booth, like the rest of the PlayStation booth had like younger people working in it, but like just the Detroit booth had like. 
moms working there. <laughs> like, I thought one of them was going to r- walk up to me and ask me if I wanted a snack or something <laughs> because, like... <laughs> Like, kinda you look hungry. Of, Do you need a sandwich? Let kinda, me make you a sandwich. Kind of. I thought because of, like, the allegation stuff. That's like, the, that was my first thought, but I was just like, look, probably 80% of the people that are at this convention don't know that that's going on. So, like, I... Oh, I, they know what's going on. I don't know. It was just like, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, But in the PlayStation booth, I played, uh, I played Soul Calibur VI. Um... Where's my notes here? Soul Calibur Six. I only played for like five or ten, five or like seven minutes. I was like, I got my, I got, I got my, my fill of it. It feels more deliberate and defensive than the older uh, Soul, Calibur. Soul Calibers. It feels more accessible. Uh, Interesting. See, I never thought that Soul Calibur felt inaccessible. At, at least yeah. one and two. I mean, three been... kind of turned me off at that point, but. I mean, I haven't played Soul Calibur since 2, and I've played a lot of other fighting games that were not as accessible since then, so maybe Soul Calibur just felt... Well, I guess I played Soul Calibur 4 because of uh, the Star Wars stuff. Yeah, but... and Darth Vader, yeah. Yeah, I stopped at the 2. After, I, after Link felt so good in that game, I was just like, I don't want to play anything else of Soul Calibur. Yeah. Link was great. Spawn was awesome in that, too. Hihachi, not so much, but Spawn was fairly underappreciated for uh what he was yeah uh the the combos felt kind of simplified and like i kind of mastered or not mastered mastered is a is a long stretch of that but like within like two minutes i kind of got a feel for one of the characters i was playing as i don't know who i was playing as i just picked one because i was like i just want to play just to get a feel for it but like i i felt like the combos were easier to pick up than most fighting games uh, the weapons feel really cool. Uh, I was playing this guy with like a long katana sword. It felt really good. Mr. Rugi. Sure. I don't know. He, I don't know. He had a his, black ponytail. His, yeah, Mr. Rugi. Okay. He's the uh, he's like the Ryu. Uh, oh, okay. So character. Yeah. Uh, uh, the character, like the character models, look amazing in that game. But like, I I mean, I was blown away by the character models in that game. But like, the environments look unfinished. Which is kind of basic. Which is kind of understandable for a uh, uh, like a bit like a, this build, you know. Like they want the characters to feel right, um, but the the environments felt really unfinished and kind of muddy. Uh, they didn't have a lot of the lighting, I guess, in in this build, but the characters felt good. Uh, there's only six characters in the demo, so I I don't know any of them. I wanted to play as uh, Geralt from The Witcher, but he wasn't in the demo, so. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> um oh speaking of of soul caliber and by speaking of soul caliber i mean this has nothing to do with soul caliber except for it's another <laughs> fighting game snk mm-hmm. heroines was the other game in the nintendo booth that i played okay. it was a freaking awesome dumb fighting game it kind of felt like it felt like street fighter and smash brothers kind of had a baby mm-hmm. like and they were all scantily clad women <laughs> it was just like this insane clusterfuck of uh bikinis and boobs everywhere yeah dude the one yeah. the one character in that game her starting stance is literally her bending over swinging her boobs <laughs> like this i'm like really oh, like <laughs> that, that would be mine uh but uh snk heroines was fun man like they said it's gonna be a locked 30 1080p or locked 60 1080p 60 okay. uh at launch uh Good. but the demo was running at 30 and i think 30 was being generous i think it was more like 20 22 frames a second but man was it every time was it like when they do the combos they it was like stuttering like yeah and stuff? it like some yeah, they, like the game would literally like stop once when, when you hit a big combo yeah they kind of should show that in a trailer yeah, so I wonder if that's going to change later on. Yeah, but he said the game's going to feel a lot faster and a lot, uh, and the, the frame rate's going to be locked six. They're gonna, aiming for a locked sixty, even if the uh, even if the resolution. They're aiming for ten eighty, but they might dumb it down to nine hundred. Who's the Who's the publisher of SNK now? Is it Hamster? No, I think it's SNK. 
I think it's SNK. I'm pretty sure SNK still publishes all their own shit. Yeah. No, but Hipster does their uh their eShop stuff for the old games, for the arcades. Yeah, that for might the... just be for porting old arcade stuff. Yeah. But SNK is doing their own uh because I know they I think they do their own for PS4. With the last King of Fighters like that came out for like fourteen. I think SNK might have did it. That's why I was just wondering. Uh, is there like a part? Is the hamster and SK got a partnership? Uh, I don't know. It it didn't say hamster anywhere at the booth. So okay. uh, the other game, the other game, I forgot to mention the Nintendo booth that I played for like five minutes, and I was like, okay, I'm good. Was Crash? Uh, okay, Crash was. I mean, it looked pretty. It looked fine. It, crash was it, Crash. It, it's it's Crash. Like I don't know how else to explain it. It's just Crash. No, just move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I, back to. I, Oh, sorry. Well, that's okay. I, I figured we you were rounding up with uh, SNK there. Um, I, I wanted to ask your thoughts, because I've been ranting and raving about this shit for weeks now. Uh, I was going to segue here, because I figured this is a great segue. Speaking of heroin, tell me what you think of Dead Cells. Well, before you get the Dead Cells, was that all the Sony stuff? First. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Uh, we'll just we'll finish we'll finish up at the Sony booth because there's a couple there's a couple games I want to like kind of skim over, and they kind of lead into Dead Cells because okay. you know Dead Cells is like of all the kind of rogue light, uh, Metroid Castlevania style games, mm-hmm. like Dead Cells is clearly the best one that I played. Uh, but I played I played about five minutes of Chasm, which is coming to PS4 and Vita first. Uh, yeah. And Moose really wanted me to play it, so I was like, "Fine, I'll play it." That game does not Vita look Vita shit? Really? At all. Jesus. It like, I mean, I think it looks cool. Like, it's got an interesting concept, but like everything that it's trying to do, Dead Cells did ten times better. Like the pixel art, right? It has a cool pixel art style, but Dead Cells looks looks better. Like I feel like you know those games where you get the pixel art and the characters are just like a little bit too big for this environment that they're exploring. Yeah. That's what Chasm feels like. Like the character like the character sprites are too big for the world that they're exploring. And then it like the world just if the world just feels like super zoomed in. Which, like, in a Metroidvania style game, I kind of want the camera pulled out. You know, that's why I like Axiom Verge so much. It's why Dead Cells works, I think, because you can see, like, a you know, lot. You can see a lot going on at one time. And in Chasm, you really can't see a lot going on. You know, yeah. Yeah. the camera, the camera is, is kind of like, what's a game that I can compare it to? Um, I can't really that think is, of anything off is, the top of my that head. That is zoned up, zoned in. How about Metroid Two? I would kind of say, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, that's that's exactly what. It, yeah, you nailed it. Like, it's super zoomed in. The character takes up too much of the screen for you to feel comfortable moving through the environment. The sound effects are nice, but like again, when you're like jumping down or jumping, like chasms sound sounds way better cat or uh dead cells sound dead sounds cells. way better the music sounds better like i feel bad because chasm looks like a cool game and if dead cells didn't exist i would be a lot higher on chasm except for the fact that it. five minutes into the demo the unit crashed and it did that to oh. me it did it to me three oh. times <laughs> the unit Jeez, crashed yikes. three times uh so Jeez. i I didn't really get to see a lot of it, but like just that initial, like maybe, maybe uh, that's why that maybe what, maybe that's why that trailer for that game was so bad that all you see pretty much just see him running to different places. Yeah. Like, you well, don't really see him do. well, that, that trailer is like how zoomed in that game is like, that's the game. Yeah. It's not like zoomed <laughs> in on purpose. That's like, that's just the game. And that's why I, I was just, just... That's, why, that's why I was just like, this game looks boring. I'm like, what do you, like I don't know what you do with that game. It's I wouldn't say like it's boring because device. it's 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 got a similar style to Dead Cells and the fact that you're exploring and fighting enemies and kind of like exploring this place where you don't really know. It's just that Dead Cells does it so much better that it's like 
I, like I, Ka- like Dead Cells is lucky that it's coming to Switch first and Chasm's coming to PS4 first because if they were coming out on both systems at the same time, Chasm would be in trouble. That's well, that, Chasm and that's is all already in trouble. No, I think I, there's a lot of hype around that game. I I I've, I've I, been reading I, a lot about that game that people on PS4 that are excited for it, but like I think that's going to be a smaller majority because of Chasm. Yeah, if Chasm and Dead Cells would have would have dropped at the same time. Yeah, Dead Cells is going to kill. Dude, this. Dead Cells gonna like they they made me take a survey and I got a sweet Nintendo bag for taking the survey. Nice. Uh, but Nintendo made me take a survey and like I th- it was really hard for me to pick what the best game was, but I wanted to give it to Dead Cells because I want because whatever game has the most votes, they're gonna promote the most and like. Ooh. <laughs> and I like Dead Cells. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick Dead Cells because I, I think it deserves my vote, right? Yeah. Well, apparently everybody else was thinking the same thing because like it was Dead Cells and Dark Souls were close, and then those two were just blowing away every other game. <laughs> so, Jesus, well, I'm just before like you get, before you get to Dead Cells. I don't know if you finished with uh with Sony the Messenger. Because it seems that it was on the same level as Dead Cells in a way, but two different, two different uh, viewpoints. It's not. Like it's not like Dead Cells at all. The Messenger is. Yeah. It, the Messenger is. I I probably should have talked about this. I was waiting for Messenger when we got to some cool indies. Uh, but since you brought it up, Messenger is straight up Ninja Gaiden for NES, like straight up, except for the fact that like the time mechanic in the game uh-huh. where like you you play through the 8 bit stuff relatively quickly mm-hmm. and then you're launched 30 years in the future to but the then 16-bit. yeah and the whole game the whole game turns 16 bit and then you have to time travel like there's certain points in the game where like i think you at some point you get the mechanic like all the time but like, mm-hmm. there's certain points in the game where you can time travel back to the eight bit stuff to salt because like there'll be like a tree in your way, right? You have to go back to the eight bit and like solve the puzzle on how to cut down the tree, and then you jump back to the future and that tree's no longer there and you can continue your quest. It does it feel substantial enough to justify the gimmick? I I only like the gimmick was cool. But there was such a long line, they only let me play for, like, seven or eight minutes. And by the time, like, I, half of my demo was spent reading a text box because they were t- telling me how to, like, open crates and stuff for better items. And I was, like, trying to smash through it. I'm like, I get it. You press A to open the crate. But it was, like, old school NES stuff where, like, it would just Ooh. keep going and going and going and going. So, like, half of my demo was... It, in this like house reading about this box that's going to give me a special item that would help me you know do the time mechanic and i'm like okay i get it come on come on come on come on come on so like i only got to use the time mechanic twice but i thought the time mechanic was cool enough to like if they if they space it out right and you go back and like you have to like where the mechanic i think will shine is if they implement it into like boss battles and stuff like if you okay. go fight a okay. bo- if you go fight a boss and you have to rewind time to like trap the boss in this one little area or whatever and then move ahead in time like I think that could be cool but again I only got to play for about 5 minutes like the game proper for about 5 minutes How how's the gameplay like the no, it, action it, it it feels dude if, if you know how to play Ninja Gaiden for NES you know how to play this game like okay, it, that's it, all I care for the I running care. is the you would swear the code was lifted right out of the NES version. The running feels <laughs> like it. The the sword swipes feel like it. The 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 music? the music is similar but different enough to like. It's cool. It sounds cool. It's got a little bit more bass. I feel like to it than the NES version. Uh, but like, I mean, it's it's running on new hardware. I don't see why the music. I mean, is it like rock action kind of throughout it in the sense? It's kind of. I couldn't really hear a lot of it because there was a ton of people talking, but it kind of sounded like Mega Man esque, a little bit. Okay. With That's a little, why. with a little bit of like a Asian feel to Mayor. it. Yeah. So, okay. uh, but it's yeah. it sounded cool. Like, dude, the running animation and the wall jumps and stuff is straight up Ninja Gaiden. He even does a little flip when you jump. Like it, it's insane. It's insane That's how. All I- 
Like, yeah. I so. was just scared. Yeah, I was just scared about the gameplay. If it was just like action packed. Yeah. If it, if, it feel, if it feels good, that's all I care for. I don't care about the time mechanic. Yeah. That's nothing new. Yeah. Uh. So, um. But that's about all I played at Sony's. Uh. I mean, the messenger was at Nintendo's booth, but like, and they had their own booth, but there okay. wasn't really. There's nothing really else worth to talk about. It's oh, actually, if you're a fan of Super Meat Boy. Super Meat Boy Forever is the uh, continuous running version of Super Meat Boy and actually feels a lot better than I thought it was going to feel. Really? Like, yeah, it kind of has that. Did you ever play the Rayman games on phone? No. Uh, uh, it kind of feels like that, but like the timing felt good. Like the speed felt good. Like it felt like Super Meat Boy. And I was like, how do they make a continuous runner feel like this? Like I was, I was impressed. And you had to play it more like a rhythm game, okay. uh, more than so the... a, a little more like a la Bit Trip Runner. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was, I was about to say, like Runner. Yeah, uh, but it was fun. It was cool. Like I was not looking forward to that game at all, and now I'm like thoroughly interested to see how that game turns out. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. oh, speaking of rhythm games, Just Shapes and Beats, that yes. rhythm bullet the bullet hell me. game. Oh, it's awesome. It's so cool. Yes. Like, like I sucked at it, but I was watching some like one of the Nintendo people that clearly has played this game like the last four four years of his life, it was seems it, like. Was he like a, a big black man? Yeah. On the microphone? Yeah, that yeah, guy there's the, a video. Yeah, the video on the on the YouTube page is uh that guy that I watched that guy play it. Dude, he was freaking amazing at that game. I'm like, I don't know how you're pressing all these buttons at one time, but it was like Cause it looked like, you know, when you watch like the professional guitar hero players play yeah. the game and their fingers are moving like, like that. I just want to point out for a second that that phrase makes me throw up in my mouth a little bit. What professional guitar hero players? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but I I didn't mean it like that. I just meant like people that, that are really good like at guitar hero. Musician just rolled over in their grave. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't mean it like that. I just meant like people that are really good at guitar hero. <laughs> That's all right. The internet I'm already so hates me. I'm so glad that never made it to like full blown esports competitive gaming. That's yeah. just, uh, but it's like watching somebody playing Guitar Hero really fast, but like on a pro controller, and you just right. see, like he was playing, like he was literally playing with his pointer finger and his thumb on the on the top on the pro controller, with his middle finger on the on R two or R Z, and it's yeah. like, how are you this good? And like, oh. It was really good. It was. It's a cool it looks, game to watch and listen to, man. It looks good. Uh, I think the problem with the video is that I couldn't hear it. Yeah. So I think it. I think it's something that you gotta probably just when the game comes out. If they do a demo, check it out. Yeah. But if they or the go cool watch game, the trailers, like, like on Nintendo's YouTube page, there's a trailer for uh, it. Like the music, like the video online doesn't do it justice. But like if you go to Nintendo's YouTube channel and listen just listen to the music like I, I, that game was, sounds was, amazing like i want I that soundtrack so, when it comes out i was so when they showed it at the uh Nindies direct mm-hmm. like in here and i'm just like oh yeah this is gonna be this is gonna be my house music game yeah, yeah. this this was one of the few things from that Nindies direct that really grabbed me and made me kind of perk up and go hmm. yeah you know i mean it feels like this this could possibly be the the next iteration to what we've been missing since uh, the original Bit Trip series went dark when it finished. Yeah. It, it did was a runner supposed to come up? Yeah, runner, uh, runner three, three was there. Coming up. It was there. I didn't play it. I was just like, I know what runner you is. Know, I don't need to play it. Like, whatever. And the sad thing is, as much as I love the Bit Trip stuff. The uh-huh. runner stuff just doesn't do it for me. Like the first runner was my least favorite out of the all six of those games, and the fact that that's the one tangent that they've continued on with Bit Trip, rather than any of the others that were fucking awesome. I like the shoot that. a butt one. Uh, like, Fate. Yeah, I love that Fate one. Fate was awesome. That soundtrack is crazy, Bunker's oh, good. Oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, momentary pimp moment here. Just, you know, if if any of you have the opportunity, go get on Amazon and 
buy a copy of the Bit Trip Complete Collection for the Wii, buy a new sealed copy because the soundtrack is in there for all six games. It, it would be cool if they actually... I didn't even think about that, them bringing that to Switch. I would love to see it on Switch. It, oh my god, bring it back! Ah! <laughs> Sorry, Those Corey. six games were just unbelievable. Mm. Um. So... Yeah, uh, okay, so what what do we want to go into now? Uh, Super Meat Boy, I mean, like, it's it has a different art style than the one that's on Switch. It m- looks more like the uh, hand-drawn cutscenes than the... Uh, cutscenes is a heavy word. Uh, like the hand, hand-drawn stills uh, that tell the story, but it still feels really good, so... Um, Firewatch? Was it there, or they just did mm-hmm. the announcement? No, it wasn't there. Okay. Uh, but there was a game... Like, it, I guess we're just going to go into some of the indies that I played now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first game, I kind of want to give a shout out to you. It's only on Steam right now, but it you brought up Firewatch, and uh, it's kind of like a walking sim, but like the Matrix meets Tron style walking yeah. simulator, where like the game builds out these elaborate, kind of like Tron esque uh, worlds that you can walk through. It's called. It's called Zero North Zero West, and you can play it either on Steam or in Steam VR. And it's just a walking simulator where you walk through these kind of Tron esque worlds, where like, you know, all the buildings are kind of like, well, I guess it would be more like Blade Runner esque, where like everything's very colorful and dark at the same time. And right, it's it's kind of got that neon thing. Uh huh. Yeah, and uh. It looked really cool, and it it. You I said mean, zero north, zero west. Yeah. Spelled out zero or the number zero. Uh, the the card he gave me. Found had, it. Okay. It's it's listed really fucking weird on Steam. Like I was looking it up as you're talking. Yeah. And, and for anybody looking for it, um, don't bother trying to type out the whole thing. Just start with the number zero, and go from there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll come up as like zero degrees north, zero degrees west. Yeah, uh, and it it was. I mean, it's nothing like super impressive or anything. I just thought it was like a really cool take on the walking sim. So, mm-hmm. uh, if you're into walking sims and you have and you're into like that, so you should check it out a little bit. Like, it was literally like two guys at their booth trying to show off their game, and I was like, oh, it looks cool. I'll try it out. Nobody... Yeah, I'm. I'm looking at the the trailer on steam as you're and i'm just going yep this has my interest yeah because it looks like it's just uh it says here you know a visual auditory stimuli adventure yeah the music like, the music was cool. pretty kind of like uh what can i compare it to kind of like stranger things-esque like the okay. theme song the stranger things kind of that synth style kind of slowy synth stuff so uh it was cool Definitely wear headphones if you play it. Yeah, I'm, I'm nice. marking that for uh, later. So I was, I wonder why. When did they announce, did they announce the first switch or like was that first time they announced it? What? Uh, zero. No, it's only on game. Steam. It's only on Steam. Oh, okay. Um, so I I'm gonna get into some of the Team Seventeen stuff. Uh, Planet Alpha. Yes. Planet Alpha was there. It's like this really kind of simple simple platforming game it's like a platforming exploratory adventure where you're like just exploring these different planets but you're just trying to get through and doing some cool platforming and stuff light puzzle solving the enemies that were in the game were just kind of like they kind of reminded me of like sonic enemies where they just kind of like showed up for a minute to get in your way and then they left (laughs) Uh, (laughs) so that game was really cool it had a really awesome art style though uh it, it was cool because the the backgrounds and the and the environments looked really really pretty, and then the effects when you would run by like the flowers or the tall blades of grass and stuff, just the little touches of the effects is like you run by the flowers and like little like petals kind of fly up in the air and kind of blow in the wind and it was it wasn't like an amazing game but just the little touches of the game made it a little bit more special than those types of platformers so. 
Uh, Ed, this one's straight up your alley. <laughs> Raging Justice is a side-scrolling beat 'em up. Beat 'em up, yeah. Uh, I seen the trailer for it. It kind of had a Streets of Rage meets Double Dragon <laughs> like uh, <laughs> feel to it, but like modernized. Uh, the hitbox is slow, though. It it is slow, but so was Double Dragon. Double Dragon is slow on NES, so like it. Yep. It, it it had that old school, but the hitboxes felt really good, except for like, and we'll get to this later, but it had the same issue I had with Shaq Fu. Uh, but like, your your attacks are limited to the horizontal plane. Like, even if you're moving up, you stop and turn and punch left or right. And oh, you can't okay. like, you can't like punch somebody up or down, which is like in modern brawlers, like you should be able to do that. You know, that's kind of a staple of the the uh, the brawler genre. I yeah. mean, even something as contemporary brawler wise as um, I, contemporary might not even be the right word for it anymore. But like Castle Crashers or uh, no, uh, Wolverblade. You know, it's just Wolverblade it, is there. It's, yeah, you know, it's it's about that kind of angled plane that you're you know up and getting yourself lined up onto the right spot on that plane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it it was cool. Like there was there was four of us playing it, and it was it was a good time. Like it was just dumb fun. We were all laughing. Like probably never gonna buy this game, but four of us playing it was a good time. I mean, uh, if it comes out for like six or seven dollars, I'll pick it up. I mean, I love beat 'em ups. So yeah, uh, I tried to play Pit People. Speaking of uh, yes, Castle Crashers. It was weird, man. I tried to get into the game, and and like all these units were like. I had a really hard time getting on a unit that would just stay up. Like I only played pit people for like five minutes and like the, the HDMI port that they were using went bad. And so that station just like they shut down that station for a while. And then I never went back to play it. But I mean, it's a behemoth game. You can definitely tell by the art style and, uh, you know, it it, isn't, isn't it that the strategy kind of game, like a board strategy kind of game. Yeah. It kind of like, the 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 they're like hexagons and you kind of move them yeah. around hexagons. It kind of has like a Settlers of Catan board game kind of feel. It, to it, it. looks boring to me. I'm like, oh, no, this is a strategy game. I can't get it. So. Yeah, because I'm I was curious to see what you thought because for me, so for this kind of feels like where Behemoth is losing me. Like I I was totally on for uh, Hominid and Crashers and uh battle block but looking at pit people i'm looking at going yeah it, i mean if you the hook yeah i mean if if you're looking for crash castle crashers again this is not going to be the game for you it's it's definitely something I, really different for them i mean granted i applaud them for having the versatility to do it yeah but if you're gonna if you're gonna be that kind of versatile you have to be able to nail whatever it is that you're doing yeah because um, otherwise, it's you're just gonna be like fucking Jordan playing baseball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but sports metaphor. Yeah, sports. Uh, sports. The the one indie. Well, there's a lot of indie games I was impressed with, but the one that like I was kind of unsure of going into, and I was very happy that I got to play it because I think this is going to be one of like the next big thing in indie games. Uh, Decay of Logos. That looked awesome. The the action Holy RPG that's God. very Breath of the Wild, and by Breath of the Wild, it is like it. It's not exactly like Breath of the Wild, but it's a little bit deeper than Zelda was. Where like it's a it's an actual action RPG where you can actually upgrade your character as you move progress through the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the world re- what the, was it top down? No, it's it it's. Too- it's straight up like it was originally announced for PS4 like a year ago, I want to say. Uh-huh. And everybody's like, if you don't own a Switch and want to play Breath of the Wild, keep your eye on on Decay of Logos, dude. It has it has their version of shrines, it has their version of dungeons, it has their version of like mini bosses. It's all there. I haven't seen this game. I haven't heard it. You at need all. to look it up, man. It's it's yeah, awesome. You do. It's cool, and when it has this really it? last year. Uh, but they announced it for Switch February, I want to say. They said they were going to port it to Switch. So, um, But it wouldn't surprise me if this game came out and it was physical and it was 40 bucks. Like, 
it's that big and it's that deep. The environments are incredible looking like, mm-hmm. uh, what can I kind of compare it to? It kind of looks like it kind of has like a, if you took wind wakers art palette and made it darker and more okay. kind of like, uh, turn the saturation all the way up. Like it kind of looks like that. Uh, a lot of Browns, a lot of blues, a lot of greens, uh, the water, looks stunning you know how we were talking about wind waker's water on pod and play yeah the other day when we were playing it like imagine that but like it has like rolling waves and and like you see logs bobbing in the in the water and and all that kind of stuff it was it was beautiful and like i played it for probably 15 minutes it was great Um, i had to stick it out the bow staff i was using was like top notch it was awesome i'll probably stick with that weapon if i can I'll check it out. I just uh, haven't heard. For some reason, I just haven't heard of it. I can't believe you haven't heard of it. It was cool. Mm-mm. Uh, Shovel Knight, King of Cards. Yes, talk to me. And it, I play. I played it for about ten minutes. I played the campaign. So the, the story is actually really funny. I was in line, and like they they had in one of the units they had to like put on hold because the uh unit was a dev unit and not. A, uh, <laughs> not like a demo unit, <laughs> uh-huh. and like that we were trying to like pick levels and stuff, and they were like they had to like stop us from doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I played the uh the Trubal the Trubal level where like you know where you find the big fish in Shovel Knight, yeah, like that's that's a whole level now, and like oh, you're yes. you're nice. playing through it and like. Okay, so I want to talk about the mechanics first. King Knight has this really cool dash mechanic that, like, uh, you can use it to get farther or you can use it to dash into a wall and get, like, get a second jump out of it. Uh, That mechanic's really cool. And then you can also use it to bump enemies off platforms and stuff, which was really awesome. Uh, And then... uh, Oh, there was, like, when I was playing through this Trubal level, there was, like, these salamander things that were crawling through the level that you had to use as moving platforms. And, like, this is really... I mean, we've seen it in Super Mario Brothers and everything where, like, one one platform goes this way and you have to jump up here while this one circles around and you got to jump up onto this one. And, you know, they're circling around each other. And uh, it was a really cool kind of experience though i i can't i cannot wait for king knight man i can't wait like i'm if they don't announce a physical copy i'm gonna be really upset that has all four campaigns on it because that game said it's coming i know we had them on they said it's coming uh yeah they i mean they pretty much told me that while i was there too but uh then the other the second thing i want to talk about is like there's a competitive card game in this yeah. game, yeah, That's... I I was really curious about this. Yeah, there's a little bit of it. I tried to get some of it filmed on on the YouTube page, but like, I only got about thirty seconds of it, and then the person in front of me's demo ended. So like, I I didn't get very much of it, but like, it's basically kind of like Gwent in uh, like a simplified version of Gwent from The Witcher, where you challenge people in the taverns uh, through like. There's three like three full scale maps now instead of just one like in Shovel Knight, but oh. I mean I mean we'll talk about that in a minute. But like you basically go to these different like the different towns and the different taverns in the towns to to challenge people to this card game, and it's kind of like a match three card game mixed with like kind of like Go Fish and Texas Hold'em, where like you kind of have to like match your cards, but you have to match your cards, but the the cards that you match have to have a higher point percentage than the cards across from you, or you lose. And then you can like f- like exchange the cards that you have out for new ones. And I and I assume you kind of like build a deck while you're going through this game. Mm-hmm. It was it was kind of interesting to see them put a card game in here. Uh, but I guess if you're gonna call it King of Cards, just makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense to put yeah. a card game in your game. Um, so, uh, but I was, I was talking to, I don't think he was a dev. I think it was definitely a representative there, but like I was talking to him. So King Knight, 
you have a hub world, which is the castle, right? And Mm -hmm. you're trying to take over the castle. Uh, But in order to take over the castle, you have to travel to three kingdoms uh, and take over those kingdoms, which is, you know, you play through the map. And, like, it's, it's three times the size as the original Shovel Knight, which is why it's taking so long. Uh, there's the hub world, which you can kind of like gear up and, and buy equipment and stuff, which the castle, and then there's three world maps, three kingdoms. And then there's like three or four towns within each kingdom that you can challenge people to this card game. Uh, and depending on your reputation with this card game, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't really remember how he said it, but like your reputation with the card game and your completion through the the worlds is kind of how you build reputation and how you can tell if you've taken over this kingdom or not. Uh, okay. So, and he said you don't really have to do the card game to enjoy the platforming stuff. Like it's not like that built into it. But for the hardcore people that want to get all the achievements and and the accomplishments on the Nintendo version, uh, yeah, to play the game. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, and the card game can be as as easy or as complicated as you want it to be. There will be competitive, like couch competitive mode in this card game, and you kind of have random decks that you kind of pull from. Uh, and there is amiibo support, obviously, in the Switch and 3DS and Wii U versions, but they wouldn't tell me what any of the amiibo did. So Right. Uh, but that said, dude, if it's three times the size as the original Shovel Knight, <laughs> I'm sold, man. I'm uh-huh. sold. Dude, I'm already sold. I've got like three copies of it coming because I've got it on my 3DS, my Wii U, and my Switch. Yeah, right? Uh, so. But yeah, man, I'm I'm excited for Shovel Knight. And then I bought my Spectre Knight t-shirt, which was awesome. Oh, the other thing is I saw the Amiibo up close. Like they had him there. And I'm not supposed to say this, but I got to hold the Spectre Knight Amiibo. Oh. oh dude, there's like... They're so detailed. They're so incredibly detailed that it makes the Shovel Knight Amiibo that came out first. Like, I almost want them to reissue it because these ones look so good and so detailed. Like, they're they and they're big. They're big, man. Really? They're like, I mean, they're like they're the base is the same size as the Shovel Knight one, but like Shovel <laughs> Knight are bigger. Pla- Plague Knight's probably the smallest, and then Shovel Knight. But Spectre Knight and King Knight are humongous, man, compared to these other ones. They're probably like I'm trying to think. They're like they're like Le- if you have the uh, or du- get, the Daruk uh, the Daruk amiibo from the uh, Breath of the Wild series. Yeah, okay. they're probably that big at least. I was gonna say uh, uh, King Bowser, and they're and they're super they're super detailed, man. Like King Knight, you can see all like the the designs in his helmet. You can see the fur on his like uh. What do you so call I can it? imagine cape. Spectre Knight being really really detailed. Yeah, you, in his too. cape, in his cape, you can see like the all the creases and the folds in his cape. You can see the the helmet detail and the armor detail is super clean. Uh, it's they are impressive amiibo. They're probably some of the best looking ones that are out right now, like hands down. Oh, it gets me so hype. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time at the Yacht Club booth, man. It was it was a good time. I played it. Those guys are fucking awesome. Yeah, I played it. I played it on. I did play the Switch version of the game, and I did play what I assume is the Xbox One version. But everything I played on Xbox, I was told was I was actually playing it on either a dev unit. Or a, P- a gaming PC. PC, so I don't know. I played it with an Xbox controller. Not that Shovel Knight's super like hardware taxing, but yeah, right. Uh, just just wanted to throw that out there, just in case. Uh, so let's see what else. Guacamelee Two. It feels just like Guacamelee, but there's multiplayer. Like there's four player multiplayer, and let me tell you what. In the video that I that I have on the on the YouTube on the YouTube page like we were playing and then all of a sudden like the game pauses big like super huge crazy letters pop up it just says luche and it just screams and everybody turns into a giant chicken and we fought the boss as 
four giant chickens. Uh, chickens, yeah. <laughs> Is that the part where you was already small chicken and y'all was going to that area and then y'all turned, yeah, I was cracking up. I was just like, oh, they went in for this. Yeah. I need to go back and give the first one a fair shake. I really didn't. Yeah, I, I I'm kind of surprised the way you like love Metroid and, and Dead Cells and stuff that like you just didn't get it. I into... know. Like I got it from one of the very rare humble bundles that they they did some uh, console stuff with the Wii U, and that's that's where I got it. And I I dinked around with it, and something about it didn't grab me immediately, and it got put down for something else, and I just never went back to it. Yeah, I love that game. Uh, I bought but... it uh, when it came out on PlayStation Four. Yeah, I mean PlayStation Three. I was yeah, just like yeah, this is good. Uh, again, PlayStation First is all they would tell me. Uh, they said strict box. Yeah, just stay tuned for more. Uh, you know, it's going to come to everything else eventually, I assume. So, uh, they didn't say Vita though. They didn't tell me Vita. They just said PlayStation Four first. So, I think we'll probably get it next year for everything else. I think it's probably like a six month exclusive. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if like whenever the Super Ultra Remix version, whatever comes out, Championship right. Edition comes out. Uh, Garage was the top-down kind of zombie apocalypse. Uh, it dude. looked so uninteresting. No, dude. Like, I thought that too, and I sat down and played it, and I sat at their booth for 20 minutes playing it. Like, it, it's not like a typical twin-stick shooter. It feels like zombies ate my neighbors, is what it feels like. Okay. It's, I still get loaded from it. Every time I look at it, I think I'm loaded. Oh, my gosh. Sexual. It was... Like, I went in totally uninterested in that game, but I'm like, look, it's coming to Switch. I need to play it just f- for the simple fact so we can talk about it at some point. And I was, I came away kind of impressed by that game. Like, you, st- the demo started off, you walk into this, you walk into this garage and there's a shot, there's literally just a shotgun laying in front of you and a box of shotgun shells. And you walk to the right, there's a zombie eating somebody. So you shoot the, like your first intention is to like shoot the zombie, right? I mean, there's a zombie coming at you. You want to shoot him. Next thing you know, this huge horde of zombies just comes running at you. And like, there's three, like every time you kill a zombie, they drop shotgun shells or not, not everyone, but every couple probably drops ammo, uh, like any typical game would. And like, you just find yourself being overwhelmed by these zombies. Well, in certain spots you can trap zombies in certain places so you can kind of like take them on one at a time instead of you know taking on 10 12 15 of them at a time which is bottle neck them yeah and like there's a lot of strategy in that game that i did not expect and like the world huh. as you op- as the world opens up it kind of like the level design kind of reminds me of zombie eight, zombies ate my neighbors to the point where like there was a there's like a entrance that looks like the football field from uh, Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. So I don't know if that's what it was, but it it really gave me that vibe. So Garage is cool. Like I don't know yeah. if it's a day one purchase, but it's definitely something that if it's on sale for five bucks at some point, like yeah, you could check it okay. out and have have a lot of fun with it. And they're playing. I asked them if there's going to be multiplayer because I think that game would be really fun multiplayer, and they said they're tooling around with the idea of adding it. So, okay. Um, which I think is where that game would shine if you could play through that game multiplayer, like local co-op or whatever. Like, especially on Switch, I think that'd be cool. So. Yeah. Uh, and then let's see, Flint Hook. I played on Switch. Uh, I hadn't played it yet. Uh, Flint Hook. I hadn't played it yet. It feels really good. The movement feels good. The big sprites kind of... I, again, like, if there's big sprites on the screen, I can't... That, that one didn't feel as bad to me as, like, uh, Zeo Drifter. Yeah, I didn't... I See, I haven't checked out Zeo Drifter, so I couldn't tell you. But, like, I, like for me, like, the big sprites thing, like, it, it just feels like they take up too much of the screen. But, like, it was fun. Like, I, I think the, the hook the hook mechanic feels really good and mm-hmm. you know, the ability to slow down time to like yeah. get through certain areas or slow down enemies to get behind them. Feel really good. Um, 
but I, I only played it for about 10 minutes. And I, the only reason why I walked up to it is because like the dev was there and nobody was standing in line for that game, but they also really? they also brought Mercenary Kings for Switch, and everybody was playing Mercenary Kings. I'm like, but Flint Hook is their new game. <laughs> but, I, mean, but, Flint, I mean, because it's been out on everything else, probably. People yeah. already played it. Yeah, I know, but still, it was just like, it was one of those things where, like, I kind of felt bad <laughs> that, like, but, like, on Thursday, it, was, it wasn't very crowded, and, like, a lot of the indie mega booth wasn't getting a lot of attention because everybody wanted to stand in line for the big stuff on the first day. So yeah. like I was walking around the indie mega booth and I felt bad for a lot of the, because like I didn't know how Friday or Saturday were going to be. So but Friday, everybody was lined up to play everything. So I was like, well, oh, good thing I got through a lot of these indie games. Uh, right. So let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Talked about that. Talked about that. Oh, the last game, the last game I might, well, <laughs> I have two more games, but we'll start with Shaq Fu. Talk to me. Shaq Fu is mediocre at best. And he's got this look of disgust <laughs> on his face for anybody that's listening to the audio version. <laughs> Shaq, Shaq, Shaq Fu is... Uh, look, Shaq Fu is not very good. All right? Like, I, I know, like, we kind of... It's like an inside joke that we're excited for Shaq Fu, but look, Shaq Fu is not very good. And it it has the same problem that I had with Raging Justice where, like, there's so many times where I was walking up or diagonal and I could have totally fought these things diagonally or, or vertically. And like your move set goes to the left or right every time. And I'm like, no, no, just change it. I don't care if it's a side scrolling beat em up, just change it. It would make this game infinitely better. Uh, okay. Maybe not infinitely better, but it would make the game better. <laughs> uh, I was playing on PS4 Pro and it was it was the it was still kind of framey. There was not I played it for like 20 minutes and like I kept looking around to see if anybody else would play it and I was like there was five stations set up and there was only two people playing it. I was like, well, this kind of says a lot about this game. Uh, Ouch. Dude, the enemy design in that fir- in the demo area at least was not very plentiful. There was like these very kind of <laughs> <laughs> racist caricatures of these little Asian men with like the like the the triangle like round triangle pointy hats and like the long yeah. like the long robes going like this with their hands inside the sleeves coming at you doing like one of these things and like you were fighting these little like like these caricature Asian people and I was like Oh, this isn't racist at all. But I guess if you're, I guess if you're playing someone that as someone that's not white, this isn't racist. Uh, but and then like there's these blue, like demon, half demon, half goat women that would like throw magic at you, and you would have to like fight them. And that was like that was those were the only two enemies I fought in the first ten minutes of the demo. That's a shame. And then I got to this part where there it's very clearly supposed to be a mini boss. And it was like this big, this big fat, like sumo wrestler guy with a shield. That's literally what he looked like. Uh, and like this weird, like head. I, I want to call it a hat, but I don't think it was a hat. <laughs> I really don't know what it was. It was very unclear about what was on this, this man's head, <laughs> but he had this shield and you had to like get behind him to do like some combo moves, and then like they started teaching you how to do combos and these like a rush attack and stuff. I was like, could have very well used this at the beginning of the game when I was being overwhelmed by stereotypical Asian monk guys that were swarming me. King Chow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, that's kind of what it was, and I'm not trying to be racist or anything, but that's that's what the enemies were. And so, like, after that, after I beat this mini-boss, I get to the That's next... That's so going to be the episode title now, Stereotypical Racist. <laughs> yeah. I get, to the, I get to the next area of the game. It was going to be swinging boobs. And I was like, I was like, okay, that mini-boss was, like, kind of tough, right? Because, like, I didn't really know what I was doing. It's very clearly a arena set up to fight a mini-boss. I get to the next stretch of, like, horizontal row... Yeah. Three of that mini boss pop out in a smaller sized area with like those the stereotypical Asian guys 
on a rooftop shooting arrows at me now. So they basically just golden axed you. Yeah, pretty much. And then, like, as soon as I beat beat one of the guys, something came swooping out of the air and dropped a box, which was the uh, the power up. And I got this like big mechanical suit that like shot lasers at these like poor sumo wrestlers with sh- wooden shields. Like I was fighting some Mulan characters, and like <laughs> with lasers. And I'm just like, this game is really ridiculous. I don't, I can't like. <laughs> I don't know really what else to say about this game. It was Corey it, can officially no longer defend it, even in comic. No, variety. I'm still going to defend it, and it's going to be funny, but. Everybody should know that I'm defending it ironically and not as a polished, well-made video game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still going to defend Shaq Fu because it's Shaq Fu, <laughs> but that's the extent of why I'm defending it. <laughs> oh God! Uh, but the, but uh, the last game I played, uh, which I actually got to sit in the in the pr- press area for that, was uh, Lightfall, and. I am thoroughly impressed with this game and like the the developer was like really nervous and like kind of you could tell English wasn't really his first language though he spoke mm-hmm. English pretty well but like he was super nervous and like I I was asking him about the game and and stuff and like I I'm going to say something and I know I don't want you guys to take this the wrong way even though it's going to sound like it, but you're going to have to take a ride with me, okay? It's going to be a ride. Is this ride going to be stereotypically racist? No, it might be. But <laughs> this was this is what I think Sega needs to look at to make a good Sonic game. Okay. Speed running is super fast. It's very it's a very vertical vertically uh a vertically designed game. To where you can still go fast but explore vertically. You know, the big hook of the game is making blocks, which, you know, Sega doesn't really need to do that for Sonic. But, like, if so- if they want Sonic to be relevant in, like, a modern-style arena, this is the game they need to look at. And I, this game had me floored. Like, the story of the game was super cool. You go into these areas and they start telling you different story, stories about the lore of the game, which I was like, I had no mm. idea this game was this deep. Like, the lore of this game. Like, there's lore behind every single block that you can use. Like, there's the normal platforming blocks that you can build, like, that you can just throw out and build, right? And to add platforming. But then you, you unlock power blocks, which you find a boat. You need to learn how to power the boat. Well, you use a power block to start the 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 rotor on the boat to get across the river. Uh, there's a lore block which like you use to unlock the lore stones that you can learn about the the story of the game. <coughs> and then uh, you know they want you to go fast. Like this game is definitely built for people who want to start speed running platformers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they want you to keep moving through the game, and that's where I bring the Sonic reference in. Is like. Sonic always wants you to keep moving, but there's always dumb obstacles in your way where, like, you keep moving through this game, and they just want you to explore different routes, but you can still get there fast. Now, there's op- there's enemies and obstacles and stuff, but they're all on, like, like there's a swinging thing, and you need to learn how to dodge the swinging, like, the swinging thing with the, the, death, <laughs> the death spikes on it. Or, like, you know, there's there's fish in the water that, like, they like to jump, like, the like the fish in Mario and you need to, you need yeah, to learn cheap cheeps. Yeah. You need to learn their patterns so you can like jump over them and throw blocks in their way so you can jump over them. And I'm like, I was, I was blown away. Like I, I wanted to get this game anyway because it, it reminded me of what I wanted, wanted Celeste to be for me. Uh-huh. But this game, I was, I was totally like floored and I got to play three different levels. Uh, so nice. It was it was cool. cool. And and like I gave him one of my business cards and I have their business their contact information somewhere on my desk. Nice. So maybe we'll All get right. them on here at some point. But yeah, PAX was busy for me. <laughs> now there's one that we didn't actually get to uh get into the meat of. We've kind of touched on it on a couple of occasions. I wanna hear your thoughts 
talk to me. On Dead, dead Cells. Cells. Oh, Dead Cells, right. We didn't get into Dead Cells. <laughs> we just kind of grazed it with a few other things and then said we'll get back to it. Yeah, so I was honestly, I was going in fully not fully expecting not to like Dead Cells because I don't like roguelikes. I don't like rogue lights. I don't like procedurally generated stuff. Uh and I'm just like I'm I know people within NGR and World War One are like interested in this game, so I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna see what it's all about. I went from I went from not being interested in this game at all to as soon as this game comes out I'm buying it. I don't care if I have to like sell my wife to <laughs> like sex sex traffickers. I don't want to buy this game. Like <laughs> It, it's just looking it's at like me like, what are you? It's like fucking heroin, isn't it? Well, like I in like the the dev is standing right there. He's he's standing there like walking me through the game. Like, okay, so you can like press down and B, and you can do like this dash down through the level, and then you can go over here. And this is your merchant. Now you're you're too poor. And like I was trying to crack jokes with him, and like I don't think he understood my jokes. So he's like, you're too poor to buy this item. And I'm like, yeah, sounds like real life. <laughs> And he, he just <laughs> kind of looked at me like, that's that's a dumb American joke. You're dumb, a dumb American. But I'm like, I don't care. I'm playing this game. It's fun. And, like, we would go through, and he was telling me, like, the, all the enemy types and, and, like, what each one does before I actually fight them. And he was like, you can take this bow and arrow or you can take the shield. Now, speedrunners will want to take the bow because they'll be able to take the enemies out faster. But... I highly recommend the shield if you don't if you don't want to die. And I'm like, well, I'm going to take the bow because you told me to take the shield. And he just was kind of surprised that I took the bow instead of the shield. And then I ended up dying. And he's like, and I was like, I'm going to take the shield this time. He's like, good idea. Like, kind of making fun of me. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, thanks, thanks, guy. Uh, so yeah, Dead Cells is cool. I like the 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 art is some of the best pixel art like i like oh, I the know. the flashy like kind of dark blues and light blues mixed in with like the bright pinks and then you get down into this one area where there's a yeah, bunch greens. of like neon greens and and yellows and stuff and you yeah. know you, you get to like even the art style of like the merchants are cool the 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 teleporters are cool you know, I got I got to this area that was kind of outside ish and like even the background designs are like, whoa, I can't believe like I thought this game was kinda of like Steam World Dig where most of it took place underground or like down in like a dungeon or whatever, and like you get outside and it's like these pinks these pinks mixed with some whites and some like mm-hmm. neon pinks and some blues and I'm just like this game is kind of breathtaking and I can't yeah. wait to take snapshots on Switch just so I can use them as <laughs> as laptop backgrounds and wallpapers and stuff (laughs) uh it felt the movement felt good like i was afraid it was going to be kind of slow it felt really good like to move uh the jumping felt really good the double jump and the wall jumps felt really good uh the the attack like the attack animations felt right on point you know uh blocking stuff and pairing stuff with your shield felt really good once I got that mechanic down, uh, it, I was thoroughly impressed with Dead Cells, and and I cannot wait to play more Dead Cells. And I'm like, I told the guy, I I was straight up with the guy. I was like, look, <clears throat> I I came over here because a bunch of my friends want to know how the Switch version plays. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really care about rogue lights or these types of games at all. And he's like. Well, I I hope you give it a chance. I I told him at the end of the demo, I'm like, I'm sold on this game. Like day, this is a day one purchase on Switch for me. Like, I I'm sold. He's like, good, good. I'm glad you liked it. I'm like, I'm like, I run this podcast. I would love for you to come on one of our shows to talk about this game with us because, like, just playing this ten to fifteen minute demo just sold me on this game. He's like, he's like. Yeah, yeah. After after like convention season is over, we would love to come talk about the game. He's like, he said it's out this fall. Okay, so, so that's, that's more than we had. It wasn't a date, but so. he's like, yeah, it's coming. It's coming out real soon this fall. And I'm like, 
well, is it coming out soon or is it coming out in the fall? <laughs> <laughs> uh, It'll probably be out in the fall. But... been plowing at this thing since like eight months ago, though. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And and I was like, I'm waiting for the Switch version. You know, I I don't really play a lot of PC games like at all. Uh, but, you know, when this game Which comes out, out, when this game comes out on is... Switch, I will be playing it like day one. And, and I'm really Which happy is... I came over to play this. Which is, I wonder why Microsoft or Sony have a wit tool to get this game. But Nintendo, uh, Nin- Nintendo must have paid a pretty penny to get this as a timed exclusive. I would say I didn't hear it was a timed exclusive. My understanding was it was supposed to hit all three platforms and PC at the same time. Well, he said he said he said it's coming to Switch first, but it will be on all the other platforms eventually. Interesting. Ooh. Wow. I, I think so that that's, was a dead that's a that's yeah, a new dead little guy. nugget as far as I'm aware. Yeah. So like, I mean, it was it was interesting. They want to fo- they're focusing on the Switch version because. It's the same story that we hear from every other indie developer where it's going to sell more on... They expect it to sell more on Switch than the other platforms. Oh, their sales will. Uh, oh, people God. who play on PC, they're about to double dip on Switch because they're about to... It, I think they're going to have more precise control on the Switch version and probably with the Pro Controller. Yeah, people are going to double dip on this. Yeah. yeah. Dude, trust me. I. It's what I've been playing it on right there. Old school uh, Wii U Pro controller. I mean, it's it feels perfect. Yeah. That being said, I am perfectly ready to uh, sink into that with uh, with the Joy-Con. Yeah. So, because I mean, even on the Pro controller, there I've been playing with the the D pad, the cross pad. So, um, but in any case, yeah, I I'm so glad you 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 now understand my my obsession here yeah like i, they, I mean i don't affect the formula to okay one more run yeah like i i like like i like metroid style games i i love like i love metroid right and like but i don't like roguelikes where like you you go through and you do as much as you can and then when you die you lose it all and have to start over like i don't like that concept but dead it's cells first has it has that limited progression where like you go through you feel like like even when you die and you lose stuff you feel like you've progressed a little bit and you can just continue and and you know continue with some progress and and make make progress as you're playing through the game and that mixed with some really awesome art and level design i i'm sold man like i i was sold after i played it and i wasn't even planning on honestly like i I'm going to tell you the truth. I wasn't planning on buying it. And now I'm like, I can't wait for it. So hey, man. I was, I was already going to plan, plan on buying it. And I, I haven't played it on PC or anything, but I just seen the artwork and I just see that game in motion. I'm just like, Oh, this game looks amazing. Mm-hmm. And then just, just when I was talking to one of the guys from a four play and he was talking about dances, I'm like, Oh, this will work wonders on switch. The moment we everybody was talking about dead cells being on Switch, that following day it got announced for Switch. Oh, it, dude, it, I'm telling you, the minute I can take this thing anywhere with me, my fucking life is over. <laughs> so, I think it's I think tw- I think I think a twenty dollars for this game was too good of fun. I think twenty dollars well, would do it. It's twenty this bucks in early access right now. Early so access. I'm, yeah, so I'm guessing between twenty five and thirty full version when it hits. Yeah, well, I'm kind of not, I'm kind of if, expecting like a thirty dollar price point. He said they hadn't decided on a price point yet for its, the Switch version. I will version. pay forty for a well, hard copy. Oh yeah, no, I don't think they're gonna do hard just yet. If they do, if they do hard, I think they'll do it. They'll wait to the Xbox One and uh, PS4. I think a game as high profile as Dead Cells, I think, like I think they'll do it uh, physical eventually. Uh, it depends on the sales yeah. of everybody. I like there are, on that one. there are now two games I want a physical copy of, and that's Shovel Knight and Dead Cells. Amen. And and Lightfall. If Lightfall <laughs> and Lightfall, like if that gets a physical, like I look, I I I kind of feel bad for some of these de- developers because like some of them like sometimes I feel like they don't know how to answer the question because 
either a they're under nda or b they're just kind of nervous enough to like get their game out there let alone they're answer questions about it pr people yeah yeah but like man lightfall and dead cells are like two of the games that i'm like you those were like those were two of my favorite games at pax and i played like 40 games so I think with the, with the physical copy stuff, they just they re- people really gotta get this word of mouth out. Like a demo for both of them on Switch, with with sell it, and you know they they're gonna have to like really sell a lot of copies because if they're gonna do those physical copies, that's gonna be on the on those developers to get it done. It won't be on unless they do a contract with a publisher who's gonna publish their game for physical. Yeah. Um, just a, a small note to uh, a little uh, self promotion for uh, the NGR channel. Um, for anybody that hasn't gotten to look at much of it yet, as much as we've talked about it, um, go check out the NGR channel. We've got about an hour of uh, footage of Dead Cells Up. Um, it's it's uh, up there on the uh, World One One Plays uh, playlist there. So uh, that's that's something to go peep. And uh, so if you want a, a little bit deeper look at uh, some dead cells, that's uh, that's a great way to uh, kind of check some of that out. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. It's about a half hour of uh, dead cells. I apologize. Yeah, but some of the people there's... were commenting on the uh, on the because uh, I put up the off screen footage of the switch version on mm-hmm. the YouTube page. And, and like people were like, oh, man, this game looks awesome. I can't believe nobody's covering this game. I'm like, well, if you check the uh, World One One plays playlist, like. There's a half hour of it there, and I'm sure Larry has a ton to say about it while he's playing it. So, uh-huh. and they're like, "Oh, cool, thanks." So, yeah. yeah. So, but anyways, um, we are running way long in the tooth. Holy shit! No, we're not. We're <laughs> fine, dude. We we hit about the two hour mark here. I know, but so we had a lot to there, cover. There it was, was packs. There, there was so. Uh, I, I will say that next week we will pick up uh, with uh, games of the week and all the other nonsense that we normally do again. Um, Sorry, but... I had a lot to say. I didn't mean to no, go over it's... that much. No, definitely, and I'm I'm glad that uh, that you did. You know, I'll happily put off our usual bullshit for uh, you know something as meaty as packs, uh, especially since you know we had uh, we had boots on the ground there uh, with you being out there. Um, but in any case, a little little bit of housekeeping i suppose um minus world should be back this week uh we're we're tackling the back half of uh portal one so uh test chamber 19 to the end of the game uh go check that out and uh the uh, the previous uh iter- uh episode of uh, minus world so you can get yourself caught up if you haven't already you've got time to do that um other than that tons of awesome stuff on the ngr channel Corey obviously put up a, uh, a metric fuck ton of uh, footage from uh, PAX. Um, Eddie is always uh, on the move with everything from optional opinion to, oh, God, throw me some others. You you do everything, Eddie. Writing uh, for the moment, uh, co-hosting on other podcasts and hosting Arsenal X. And, uh, yeah, pretty much getting ready to get back to my let's learn series and um working on some other things in the back for nice. ngr nice um so yeah make sure you check out the uh the ngr radio channel on youtube for all the good stuff um also uh just finished up for probably maybe the two people that are interested but uh the uh the end of the uh world one one plays uh pegasus prime is going up on youtube here in probably the next couple of hours actually so it should be up by the time this goes up um so there is a uh there's now a full complete game up there and uh hopefully later this week should be starting uh something else uh i'm considering just going straight into buried in time to follow that up run the whole series um other than that uh yeah find us at our home shoutengine.com uh itunes google play music um and youtube for not only us but also all the other ngr radio and arsenal x and pal block and uh nerds gone platinum and all the other fucking awesome stuff that we do uh so go check all that out make sure you uh 
Uh, you click your subscribe and uh, ring the bell if we did well, and uh, that way you get your notifications of all the cool shit that uh, we've got going up on the channel all the flipping time. So, um, did we yeah, everybody, miss anything? Uh, yeah. Um, if you guys were also at PEX, we would like to hear your stories and yes, what you guys play. Um, you guys can email us at world one one podcast at gmail.com. W-O-R-L-D-1-1 podcast at gmail.com. Or drop comments on the uh, on the video here on the uh, YouTube channel. We uh, we do check those. We do look at those. Yes. So, uh, and we we do like to respond when they're there. So, um, in any case, uh, Corey, anything before we uh, dip out of here? Um, I'm working on a hundredth uh, episode trailer for NGR Radio, so uh, that'll be up at some point, probably in the next to probably like month and a half ish uh just to promote the 100th episode of ngr and everything that we've done through the last two years and you know all the uh partnerships we've made and and the show expansions and the special let's play stuff that we were doing so uh i know we kind of did that i did that kind of rough trailer beforehand but you know I'm, we're gonna have a new trailer for the uh hundredth episode and i'm really excited because the hundredth episode recording is the uh i think it's either the week of e3 or the week after so oh you realize next week uh the three of us we're churning out the hundredth episode of world one one as well yeah so and and the hundredth episode of 99 and the hundredth episode of of uh pow block is in two weeks i think yeah so i mean we're hitting milestones everywhere. Mm-hmm. Good so, job, team. Woo! Go, Team Venture. Hey. Oh, but, yeah, that's kind of it. I'm I'm tired. <laughs> Pax, <laughs> Pax kicked my butt, man. Hours. Woo. So, all right. Well, gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Everyone listening, thank you for coming in and uh, tuning in and checking out our, uh, our special brand of bullshit. Um, we'll be back uh, next week. Uh, with World One One podcasts and uh, throughout uh, all throughout the week with everything else on NGR. So uh, for the three of us, we're out. Good night, peace. See you guys next time on World One Podcast. Bye guys.